Jeff Porter from NRCS is our final presentation with lessons from the Farm Pilot Coordination Project. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm glad that you're here. I, I know. Am I, am, I, am I too loud? No. Is it good? Okay. I hope that you're excited because I'm excited. I'm, I'm all about manure, okay? That's who I am. All right. I brought a little show and tell. Okay. What do we got here? A box. We have a box. You know, unfortunately, many times what happens when we're dealing with different types of technologies and things, what we do, we get stuck in a box. We tend to just be looking at certain areas. We, we tend to almost stay focused on, on this area or this area. And, and this, I really enjoy coming and doing these types of things because we get out of the box. We're able to begin to expand our horizons a little bit and look at some of these different areas, these different concepts, these different different ideas. And what I want to spend, and I know that I'm, I'm keeping you from lunch, so we're going to go through this really fast, folks. Well, I'm going to share with you just a little bit of my experience with this organization that uh, I, I worked with uh, collaboratively, this Farm Pilot Project Coordination Group. And, and just quickly, here's some of the general information. Uh, they were actually, uh, they, they received a congressional... Uh, dollars between uh, 2002 and 2006 and they were able to use those dollars up through 2013 to look at various types of manure management treatment technologies now they had some, some uh, specific uh, restrictions I guess if you look here they were to their goal was to reduce nutrients 75 percent so that was reduce nitrogen and phosphorus in the waste stream by 75 percent that was their guidance they were given that by Congress at FPPC you meet this requirement. Now, one of the things is, as you are working on your technologies, we need to you work with the landowner and say, okay, what percentage do you need? We may not need that full 75%. We may only need 20% or 50%. So those are the kind of things that we need to make sure what we're talking about. And we're, we're trying to look at it, promoting wise use of, of the land, water, the manures, and all those, those different resources. Uh, here was the, the, the different groups that they worked with. So we covered a whole gamut of, of different livestock types and also various uh, livestock operational sizes. Uh, here are where the projects were done. They, they did about 40 different projects across the U.S. Unfortunately, I did not make the trip to Hawaii. I wish I could have done that, but I did not make that one. But I was able to actually visit many of these sites across the country to see some of the different things that they've done. Here is kind of their concept of the time frame as they worked through their different technologies. We would do a, uh, an RFP similar to what the uh, EPA did, the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, and then once it was accepted, we would go to this start. And, and then we would work on the permits and, and all these things. And that just kind of gives you an idea of those time frames, and uh, you, you'll have access to these slides, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. But, but here's where I really want you to understand, this is what they worked with a lot. As we were working with the individual companies, we wanted to make sure, do the companies, do the technology providers, do they understand their system? And, and what we found many times, uh, they may understand it from a municipality standpoint, but there's a huge difference. Once you go from municipality to livestock operations, it's not the same thing. So we wanted to make sure, did they understand the system and how it relates to animal manure? understand that the different components that they were working with do they have a big picture view or are they just looking at a, a, a piece and a part of that particular operation and then look at the, the different input you know what what is uh, what are the characteristics of the manure see a CODs BODs of animal manures much higher than you're going to have in municipalities can you address that those are things that, that really come in and, and create uh, some issues so they make sure they, they need to go through that are you tracking the the form and the and the, and the different forms of nutrients and then understand what are the outputs what are the forms we're talking about some of the byproducts what are we going to do with this stuff and how are we going to you know can it be utilized you know we have people oh yeah i can create this product and we go okay so what what are you going to do with it it, it can't be used for anything that's, that's great you got that but what are we going to do with it so we, we tried to, to get them to think through the entire process. Again, diagramming the system. Understand, this is really critical in my mind. Understand the individual unit processes that 
you are trying to deal with? You know, and, and what are those unit processes? You know, are, are they uh, going through, let me just get to this area. Are we looking at biological processes? Are we looking at physical, chemical? What are the interactions of those different processes as well? So making sure we understand all of those. And then we need to understand what are the input characteristics of each one of those different processes. You know, it's kind of talk about, you know, we don't, we don't discuss black boxes, but really that's what we've got here. We need to know, okay, what's going into the black box, number one. Something happens in there. Then, all right, now we have a new output. So what do we have that's, that's come out? Well, now that new out becomes our in for box two. So we need to understand all these concepts as, as you flow all the way through this system. So that's, this is what we worked with, again, these technology providers of how we, we go through this and understand all of the characteristics of each of those. And I've highlighted a couple points in here, but these are, again, different items that FPPC looked at. Can you scale it up? You know, we, we've talked about having a bench scale, we've talked about having pilot scale, but when you go to a full farm scale, sometimes you have to throw what you've learned out the window because you, something else has happened. It doesn't always scale up properly. And then that's what, what, in my mind, that was the beauty of the farm pilot, was that they were all farm scale applications. So we could see what was going to happen at that, that large scale. Uh, also, we, we talked a lot about being cost effective. This was actually the biggest issue we ran into, finding something that's cost effective. Oh yeah, we can separate the, the nutrients, we can do all those things, but could a farmer pay for it? And I think somebody here mentioned, you know, you may have a city that has 100,000 people paying for their waste treatment facility. But you go to a farm, you got one. It's hard to take $100 million and have one person pay for it. But you can spread that out on 100,000 people and you can make that effective. It's still hard. So that's the issue that we're dealing with with farmers. It's tough and it's extremely tough to make that work. Uh, here are some of the solids capture. These are, we've talked a lot about that and, and you're going to see here in just a moment. It's solid separation for most of these applications, these technologies, that was the number one feature. If you had a good effective solid separation, then you could do things with the rest of the stuff. But you had to make that solid separation. And I really, you know, the black flies, their solid separation there is, you know, it's already done. Yeah. So that, that's kind of interesting. Uh, we, we looked at some, some thermochemical processes as well. Uh, pyrolysis, gasification, combustion, those, those types of things. And, and you got to see, okay, what are the products? What's being produced by those things? How can those be utilized? Because most of these applications, as, as all of you know, they're not cheap. So you got to find some way. How are we going to pay for that? So you, you kind of look at these, these different applications. Uh, here's what I want to show you, some of the, the different features that they studied uh, for those, those different, they had got 40 projects. So you kind of see as you go across, solid liquid separation was probably the biggest one. As you can see, it goes across the board there. So some of the lessons learned, and then we're going to wrap it up here because I know it's getting very close to, to lunch here. Uh, engineering, you need to clearly define the objectives of who you're working with. And, and what your processes do. Understand the individual unit processes. Make sure that you know when I do this, this is what happens and this is why it happens. So we need to understand those types of things. The site management is really critical when you get to the farm scale because we need to make sure everyone knows their roles and responsibilities and that includes the landowner. Are you going to, as a technology provider, are you going to require them to gather any of the data? Are you going to require them to run any of the equipment? And if you are, do they know how? Do they have the training? Do they have the expertise? What if something goes down? What do you do? Uh, remember, what, what's the farmer there to do? With, 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 if they're a dairy, what do they want to do on a dairy? Milk cows. They want to milk cows. If, if you're on a swine farm, they want to raise pork chops. Okay? And if we're saying, Oh, well, you need to make sure that, that this, this gear is, is operated properly. Well, if they've got a cow down, that gear is going to go by the wayside. They're going to take care of the cow. So you've got to understand the farm operations, the dynamics of the operation, and work with those landowners in that, that aspect. We've got to look at the, the big picture. 
Not just your project. Your project is important. But you've got to remember, we have a farm operation going on here. And the farmer's got to stay in business. So make sure we're looking at the big picture. Again, solid liquid separation was the, the major factor that they saw throughout their studies. Need to determine, do, do we need to go further? Do I need to do something else? Or is that process that I've done, is that good enough? We always seem to try to be pushing for the maximum can I get out of this. But it may not be necessary. So make sure you know uh, who you're working with and, and what your uh, final outcome would be. This is something that Dr. Pinotti was, was just, just mentioned about waste streams. They are not homogeneous with manures. They change by time. They change by sex of animal. They change by the age of the animal. It's not homogeneous. Can your system adjust for the non-homogeneity? Is that the right word? Did I say that right? Man, that's a big word for me. You've got to be able to adjust for those changes. And again, who's going to do those adjustments? Is it the landowner or is it the technology provider? So you've got to think about those types of things. How do you deal with foreign material? You know you're going to get hoof blocks. You're going to end up with rocks, boards, chains, you're going to get all kinds of stuff. How does your system handle those types of things? Soldier flies may have a problem digesting chain. I just don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> you know, how do you handle sand? Sand's notorious. Yeah. Especially when you've got gears and when you've got motors and things, sand can be really tough. Yeah. But we're finding ways to get around it. So can your system handle that? What if you have uh, chemical additives? What impact is that going to have on your system? You know, if, if the landowner puts some antibiotics in there, could affect a digester. So we need to make sure that, you know, what they're using, what impact could that potentially have on your technologies? Now, you get the way antibiotics, you might kill all your bugs. Or uh, barbe. Sorry. What are the fate of the nutrients? What are you going to do with them? And, and make sure that you map out each unit process. Document the result. Listen, folks, I want you to understand with the FBPC, they did 40 projects. <coughs> we have very few of those projects that we've actually applied to NRCS. Why? Well, at least I don't think they failed. But we learned so many lessons, the things that did not work. And maybe that's some of the things that I can help with or Bill Reck, or, or Sharif, those of us from NRCS who have, have worked with FPPC and some of these other projects, we might be able to help you say, oh, let's not go that route, or at least we saw this happen when we did it in the past. So hopefully we can, we can help out in some of those areas. But document your results. What are the limitations? You need to understand those. I, I, I will say we've had many, many Technologies that have come in, they said, I have the answer, I have the silver bullet. And by the time they got done with their demonstration, they said, you know, this didn't work. I didn't think this through. We've got to think the process through all, all the way from beginning to end. Also, who's going to run it? So that's where the user friendliness comes in. What, what are going to be your final products? You know, one, of the, one of the biggest issues we've run into is, okay, do we develop the market first or do we develop the technology first? Because you know, you're going to need one or the other to keep it going. So that is a real hard issue to deal with is, is keeping it going. And, and having that market you know, is a good thing, but what if your system doesn't work? Okay, I've got a market now, but I don't have anything to, to feed the market. So, again, those are some things to think about. Uh, it's just, just again, some, some different things here. Think about the revenue stream, the time commitments for the technology provider and also for the landowners, for their work staff, those types of things. You've got to take that into account. Do they have the skills, skills that are needed? Understand the landowner. As you are trying to find, excuse me, the, the, the places, the operations where you want to run this, get to know the landowner. Don't just say we're going to put this project in. Get to know them. So that they understand what you're trying to do and that you can work with them to, to fit within their system. Because they have a way of doing things. And sometimes when we come in and bring a new technology, what have we done? We're messing up their system. 
So we need to make sure that we're working with it. And again, collaborate. That's part of why we're here, is for you to work with. You're looking for someone to deal with, with that, that, other, that ammonia stripping. Yeah. So maybe you've, maybe you've heard from somebody here today or through the discussion. That's why we're here. Discuss. Talk with government agencies, with universities, with, with various folks, nonprofits. They can help you to, to help you get that, that final product that's going to get you over the hump, get you over that hill to do a complete project. And, and then the last one, well, I'll, and I'll end here because I know we're after afternoon. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If you don't know, say you don't. You know, I don't understand this. What, why, why is this manure not functioning like, like it's supposed to? Ask the questions. I have several other slides that go over some examples, but I'll leave that up to you to look at the slides afterwards. I know that we need to wrap things up. Any burning questions? Yes. <laughs> so how can we be the 41st project? Well, un unfortunately, the, the funding <laughs> The funding did dry up for Farm Pilot, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they are no longer functioning in doing demonstration projects. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, oh, I that, have that. one more. Yeah, that okay, one. sure. The question. I know CIG exists, and, but it was really hard to apply. And I'm just wondering if there is any way we, as a Nutrient Recycling Challenge, together to apply. Because one thing, one. One, one thing I learned is that the, like it prefers the project with collaborators, like not right. just yes. one company. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm wondering if there are possibilities, or is it like too much of the government involvement to this challenge itself that it's not an option? Uh, it, it, definitely, collaboration is something we can do. And actually, I, I would like to work with with EPA on this. <coughs> Maybe we can get a special category for this next year on the CIG that would be Nutrient Recycling Challenge participants. I don't know if we can do that, but we can try. Because I know they're always looking for different categories and things, so that may be something we, we could look at. Yeah. So, yes, we uh, definitely looking Let's for that collaboration. Later to yeah. talk about yeah. what was difficult and what... But, but I will say that the, the CIGs, they are demonstration projects predominantly. <coughs> I think they do have a research element in there now, but, but they are for demonstrations. And usually the application period will begin this year, or actually last year's was a lot earlier than usual. It came out in November. So I would expect you to look anywhere from November to January for the next CIG cycle. And that only happens once a year. So you got to kind of catch it in there. They don't usually change the format too much from year to year. All right, with that, I think we need to go to lunch. I see that uh, Jill's back there. She's saying we got to go. Got to go. Yep. So, Thanks, everyone.